got to get in and out of here as quickly as possible because this place drives me nuts and I don't know why I keep coming here because I want to get home and get working on my K member swap. A lot of activity going on tonight in the garage. I got lights out 13 playing in the background. Next to Here's my setup for uh, approach, watching uh, lights out 13. Guys and, gals are out <laughs> working on their points. and I'm getting ready to uh, drop the LS1 K member and the uh, fourth gen lower A arms that uh, came on the car when it was still the B6 car and uh, I'm going to put a UMI uh, tubular K member on and spoon performance um, lower A arms so follow along all right now this guy right here in the middle this is what they call the K member and these over here are the lower uh, A arms and I'm going to be replacing all that with the uh, previously mentioned parts I started this video in February and uh, of course you know March has since come and gone and it's now April so you'll see a lot of uh, weather swings throughout this video from snow to sun back to snow again you know I wanted to be very thorough with the video as far as what I did to the car and I think I accomplished that and uh, that's just why it uh, took so long Let's see what Mr. FedEx brought. It's February 16th. It's a little late uh, Valentine's gift. Oh, there it is. That should be the giveaway. Oh, but it's February 18th. And uh, I'm going to open this K member up and take a look at it. I actually have this K member, the same one, already on the, the uh, 2000 Trans Am to my left here on their screen and I'm gonna put this one in the 95 Firebird that's on the right side of the screen. Oh, let me tell you about that K-Member install on the 2000 TA. If these two pictures, if you could feel the angst in these two pictures, oh my goodness, what a debacle. And it's helpful that for my day job I carry a box knife, so I've already got a box knife in my pocket to open this bad boy up. Let's see what we got. Proudly made in the USA. I like that. <clears throat> oh, got some stickers and some hardware. This says stop. What's that all about? Here's a problem doing it, turning them to the retail store. That's not a problem. Wow. Oh, paper! This thing was super well packaged. Look at all that paper. I already have uh, tubular upper control arms on this car and I'm waiting on the lower ones to be uh, delivered and then I can uh, throw this in the car. The uh, tubular K member is supposedly uh, supposed to weigh a lot less than the uh, factory one so I'm going to do a, a weigh in of both of them. You know, this one before we put it on and the uh, factory LS one, one uh, after I've taken it off the car. So let's see what uh, the weight comes in here on these scales. These were my great grandmother's scales.
These are my lower control arms that I got from uh, Spohn Performance, and uh, I didn't buy them on eBay, but they used eBay tape. <laughs> so let's take a look, see what we got here. Oh no, packing peanuts. They were packed amazingly well, as you can see there. As you can see, they are very well made and they're powder coated red. They will go nicely with my UMI K member. The build time for UMI uh, performance parts was seven to eight weeks, and my car is full of their suspension parts, you know, minus the BMR drag bar. So they were my first choice. However, I had no issues whatsoever with the uh, Spone drive shaft that I bought uh, 12 years ago. Uh, you know, they had their lower A arms in stock, and the price was close to $150 less. Now let's weigh this uh, tubular lower A arm. Well, I uh, weighed the stock LS1 K member and I left the factory A arms on there too because it's significantly heavier. Um, it actually maxed out my scales and uh, actually broke the scales. So, yeah, there you go. It was quite a weight savings, apparently. Here's my parts list. Yes, that that deal. This side. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that 
something better, but. I ended up not removing the A-arms, undoing the Lakewood drag shocks. I'm undoing the castle nut for the spindle. There is a cotter pin holding the castle nut in place. Said cotter pin has broken off within the nut. Stupid thing fought me to the end. <laughs> in response to James Tall's pass at Lights Out. What is a pickle fork, you ask? This is a pickle fork. Now watch me use it. I'm separating the lower ball joint from the spindle.
There we go. Perfect. As you can see, the spindle dropped back onto the ball joint. That bolt size ended up being 18 millimeter. When I started building the car in 2007, my idea was to keep it budget minded. I bought a used factory LSK member from a fellow LS1 tech member. I still want to keep the car uh, with a budget theme and, and you know and enjoy it that way but over the years I have uh, upgraded a few things from how I originally built it uh, I guess the side benefit of that is giving me content to film oh my goodness I put that on there tight didn't I? holy cow I'm going to break bar on that guy This ended up being the only K-member bolt to give me any trouble. Hit 
No, I'm not. I'm still hitting the pan. What the The small braided line that you see me dropping down through the top of the engine bay is for the uh, turbo oil feed, and I had it, uh, you know, running down alongside the engine and up to the turbo, and it was kind of, you know, weaved through the K member, and I didn't want to pinch it, so I undid it at the turbo and am dropping it down. But later on, uh, as you'll find out, I made a boo-boo and I ended up kinking the hell out of it and had to buy a new one anyway. So this was kind of a Waste of time. Yes, I'm a Medea fan. All right, we have the factory K member and A arms removed from the car. The engine held up with the transmission jack, uh, the steering rack I left in there. Uh, now I'm going to uh, take some measurements here, uh, especially like right in here, to make sure my uh, A-arms bolt in the same spot as before. So I did a little trick, I guess you could say. I set the A-arms on the opposite sides and uh, eyeballed the bolts up as best as I could with the uh, rod ends and made sure that they were all uh, lined up well. Now I'll take them off of there, switch sides, switch their sides, and then uh, bolt them onto the K-member uh, eyeballing where the bolts are on the uh, stock LS1 uh, K-member. All right, here we are. They are bolted on and as square as I could get them. I'm balling. We will see once we get them on the car, and I'm going to go ahead and grease these lower ball joints too. Why it's upside down and they're easily accessible. 
Yes, my friends, what you're looking at is Easy Street. And we all know that nothing is easy. Let me suggest getting a buddy to help with this part. I should have done that. No, I left the uh, steering rack attached at the steering column uh, because I could just wiggle the uh, K-member up underneath it and it kind of helped protect that brake line that I wanted to keep attached. And uh, that might have not been the best idea, but it worked out in the end. That hurt. Like I said, this would be a lot easier with two people, but I'm just so stubborn. It was totally worth having three floor jacks for this project. I am checking engine mount alignment.
I turned the actual audio off during this portion because I crimped a oil cooler line and I lost my shit. So uh, there was a lot of profanity. I reversed the driver's side steering rack bolt because of the clearance issues I faced when I tried to remove it from the stock K-member. The driver's side engine mount bolt is all the way in. I don't have a light under here right now. Uh, I'll uh, get some better shots when it's done. <laughs> It was at this moment that I realized my wrench was stuck in place and I had to uh, back that nut off on the uh, under my right hand so I could uh, get the wrench back out.
I did in fact throw away the castle nut for the steering rack, but luckily it was right on top of the trash in the wastebasket. I'm going to tie up the brake line, the front brake line that crosses over underneath the uh, K member. And uh, this install will be about done. So this bolt right here, uh, the bottom of it is blind. You can't really get a wrench in there. Actually, I had a wrench in there, and uh, as you probably saw, I got it stuck. So uh, um, thankfully, it tightened without having a wrench on the bottom of it. But that's a that's a bummer. I couldn't get a ratchet socket or nothing out there. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't uh, videotape all of this tied. Uh, the passenger side work because it's the same as the driver's side but here it is all folded up together and done all right time to put the wheel back on Though you're not going to see me do it here, I am going to uh, torque the lug nuts on both front wheels after I've set the car down. I uh, got everything buttoned up, put the wheels back on it, and set it down to see where the uh, suspension was going to... Uh, you know, settle and the, the front wheels were kind of, they were towed in, you know, bad at the top, I guess, was that camber caster. I'm not exactly sure. I will uh, put an explanation right here. All right, now when I set the car down, I was dealing with negative camber, as shown in this picture, and the opposite of that would be positive camber. And I don't have to worry about it but since I mentioned it I'm throwing in the negative and positive caster uh, examples as well <clears throat> but uh, uh, I have some adjustability here on the uh, floor control arms so I'm going to uh, move those in and uh, see where I uh, where that gets me so that's what I'm doing right now Yeah, there we go. There we go. Let's try it right there and see what that does. That's... This car was a salvage title when I bought it, so it might have just a little bit of tweak to it. You know, the, the unit body. I'm not 100% sure. So that could be some of my. I've fought this before when I put this LS1 factory K member in it. Okay, let's just square it away, square it up and put it back on there. I want to 
put it like that. That's a pretty good run. Did the eyeball miss it? Of course, trying to reuse a cotter pin is like trying to unspread peanut butter, so uh, it gets a new one. Alright, now I'm going to do the passenger side and I will uh, turn the camera back on and show my results. I don't know if you can really see it here, but the uh, tire is poking in at the bottom as it should when all the uh, weight is off the suspension so hopefully when we set the car back down it'll look a lot better all right I have made my adjustments and uh, I don't know if you can tell from back here or not but it looks so much better now the uh, tires are not poking out at the bottom like they were before Yeah, looks much better. Very happy. So I've made a new upgrade to the shop that I'm enjoying today. I have put a TV out here so I can watch NHRA.TV and that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I had on a 697, got a good finish, but here's 673. Leave it second. All right, a uh, byproduct or a side effect of redoing the front suspension and steering was my steering wheel is now off center. But thankfully, I can undo these bolts right here. And this one here is right at the top, so this guy will just move over here. And I should be back pretty centered because I've got the wheels as straight as I can get them right now. And uh, we will just do the best we can. Well, it's March 5th as I uh, readjust the steering wheel, and today it's 74 degrees out. So first 70-degree uh, day we've had this year, and uh, it's kind of windy, but it's nice to be out in the garage without having to run the heat, and I can have my foot jacket on and take it off if I need to. And uh, uh, got the NHRA TV on here in the background, and we're gonna get started. <laughs> That looks a lot better. All right, here's our new oil feed line for the turbo. It's uh, ICT billet, part number 551871. It's a five foot long 4AN oil feed line. Um, just like the one I had on the car that I messed up that I will show you right now. As you can see, there's a kink here and a kink down here. Uh, it's not supposed to have any kinks in it. Um, as you would might uh, expect, I got it caught in something and it was my own uh, doing. I knew better when I did this. I uh, unhooked it and stuck it down there in the balancer pulley uh, hanging up out of the way when I was changing out the K-member. 
and uh, I was going to put it back on and I forgot. And as soon as I turned the car over, I heard it. So, uh, you know, live and learn. Thankfully, it didn't uh, do any serious damage. All right, now we're going to crawl under the car here and uh, undo that oil feed line hose. I have it tied into the uh, uh, oil port that's above the uh, oil filter on this uh, LS engine. And I got my drip pan down here because I have a feeling there might be a little oil in there that's going to want to drip out. So we will uh, get that changed. Hey, wouldn't you know it, there's some oil in there. I figured there would be. Well, of course I didn't get it on camera. That's a good sign, though. It has feeding oil up to the dirt, though. Ow, f that hurt. Get the s*** out of hand. Alright, now we got to feed that line up and out of the harm's way of anything rotating, spinning, turning, pop, all that good stuff. Now i got to reach, see if I can grab it. <laughs> Let me dive under the car. I'm going to try to route it the same way I had it last time. I don't remember what I tied it to when I got up here. I had to be that. Uh, yeah, what you dig there? I'm sure I don't have any real tight bins. I don't want any. Any kinks. These are vacuum lines for the boost controller and wastegate. Alright, that's going to do it for the uh, oil feed line replacement. Here is the uh, degreaser I'm using, uh, O'Reilly foamy engine degreaser. I have some non-foamy degreaser too. The, keep on hand so we'll uh, use a mix of both all right well the other side of this car is filthy uh, I've never I don't think I've ever cleaned it in, in the you know since I've owned it um, so I'm going to uh, do a little degreasing
This is just tap water in an old mother's spray detailer bottle. to clean up which isn't too bad all the floor jacks are waiting to be put away the cars out here got a little bit of snow today kind of warm up burn off the stink at it I'm going to raise the car up I do not like the driver's side it's still uh, the, the uh, camber it's still uh, negative and uh, I want to straighten that up passenger side looks really good well I ran into an issue that I didn't anticipate the uh, driver's side bracket for the steering rack mount is contacting my oil pan and after doing some internet research it seems to be a, a common problem with with uh, uh, racks and clearance problems with you know uh, this type of vehicle so uh, I'm going to uh, do a little alteration to this um, I really hate to cut on it but uh, you know it's the only way I can uh, see around this problem and I will also be able to uh, use the engine diaper if I make this clearance spot too because I could not slip the engine diaper around that area so uh, here we go. I do own ratchet wrenches. I don't know why I'm not using them. This bolt I actually put in upside down because of the clearance issues and putting it in. I should have uh, caught this bracket problem at that time with but I did not I have to when I cut it. <laughs> That's the Roku back here making noise. I got it turned up because it's raining out and my metal roof is loud. There we go. Well, crap. How the fuck am I gonna get that without tearing the hell out of everything here? Okay, let's let's see here. You know, I'm tear the shit out of everything and I cut it there.
Bernie, is that what we're doing? I'll throw some washers on this and drop this bolt down so it's not so close to the to the uh, oil pan. All right, I'm back. I got some washers for this bad boy. That'll help me a little bit. Yeah, yeah that'll help me a lot. They'll get my my uh. I do a lot of turning and driving with this thing, so I'm not too worried about that bracket being compromised now. It'll be alright. Alright, now let's throw the, let's throw the engine diaper on there. Let's try to anyway. Some of you may recognize this M logo. Uh, that's Motion Raceworks. Uh, what a great company to. Uh, purchase things from they make a lot of their own stuff and I do have some of their stuff on my car already and I bought one of their engine diapers since I'm uh, putting the tubular K member on the front um, it'll give me a little more room and I can put this on here and there's a lot of tracks are requiring it and it's just good safety thing to have in case you know uh, engine would let go or something you know to protect m not only myself but the, the racing surface. As far as the engine diaper goes, I, I, since I know the guy who built the car, it's best to be as safe as possible. <laughs> so, uh, I'm looking forward to putting this guy on. Since we're doing weight reduction, um, taking weight off the car, let's uh, see what uh, we're going to be adding back to it when we put the engine diaper on since how that was not on the car before so that will you know probably take a few pounds off of what we're losing but that's okay so let's put her on the scale looks like it's about two and a half pounds Oh, come on now, you ding dong. Well, fellas. Progress is being made here. Yeah. We have it all now. The rack. Huh. You can hit them. 
doing something right there in the middle. Right in the freaking middle. It's got to get past that. It ought to just slide around there. I was bound up on. It's hooked on right there. Come on. Come on, baby. Back this off a little bit. I only want to, but... There somewhere, somewhere up there. I'm wondering if I really have to have it. I think I can just kind of maybe cut that in around that guy, and it'll it'll stay up there. I think I'm hoping. Yeah, that goes around that. That goes up around that. I'm wondering, do I need to put that all back in? Get that around that guy. Up to the back there. How are we gonna do that, Scott? Can I go? Can I go around over the starter, or do I have to go underneath it? Okay, that one's gonna get that. Tightening up the cinch straps around the oil pan and uh, in between the flux plate because there is not much room at all and it's critical that uh, the uh, engine diaper and the flux plate don't make any contact with each other. Whether he wanted to or not, huh? I'm trying to fit the diaper around the starter. Oh, come on now. Yeah, really. Whoa, 
Wow. It's a tight fit. Like they said. In the Motion Raceworks yeah, instructions. I don't want, I don't want It's kind of hard to see, but if you look right down here, there is a bracket that the uh, engine diaper will uh, strap into at the rear of the engine. All right, it's kind of hard to show all these, but here is the uh, passenger side front uh, diaper bracket and the the uh, passenger side rear is right down there. I debated whether or not to put this dust cover back on the transmission and because I, I know a lot of guys don't run one anyway, but it just makes me feel better to have the uh, flex plate protected and it kind of helps hold the uh, engine diaper you know, against the oil pan and it just looks a little nicer. Now I'm checking for any interference. Alright, here we are. It's all installed. And I've test fired it, as you heard. And it's not catching on the flex plate. I ended up selling this factory LS1K member that I bought, used many years ago to a friend of mine who is going to be doing a LS swap on his 95 Firehawk. Alright, now that I've got the uh, suspension put back together, I want to drive it to make sure the, uh, you know, the alignment's fairly close and that it does okay on the road and whatnot. So, uh, here we go. Let's we'll take a little, little cruise. crooked the steering wheel is.
Well, I took it for my drive, and uh, the results were not what I wanted. As you can see, this the driver's side wheel is turned way in, and the passenger side is turned in as well. So I've got something way out of whack. Uh, probably with the steering rack, I'm guessing. So we'll see if I can make an adjustment. Here's a graphic I whipped up showing what uh, towed in means. We, we certainly don't want this. We want the wheels to be pointed straight. I am uh, loosening this jam nut here and then I can put my uh, adjustable wrench on this flat sided part of the bar here and adjust the, uh, the uh, steering rod, get my wheels straight without having to do a much of major surgery. So I'll do that and then I'll take it for another spin and see what happens. All right, this is um, trip number three to see if the uh, suspension will settle in a fashionable way that I like. I'm glad this car is somewhat street legal because I can make these little trips around the block because uh, after trip number three, I realized that uh, my last adjustment was not tight enough and it had moved. Um, yeah, that would have been bad at the racetrack, so uh, thankful for that and... Uh, Getting ready to go on trip number four. Hopefully that uh, took care of it. Well, drive number four was successful. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not perfect, the alignment, but it's uh, good for what I'm using it for. And I can always tinker with it later on. But, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. So it's April 9th, and it's like 32 degrees outside and it's 50 degrees here in the garage um, come on it's spring let's get this heat going all right I just wasn't happy with this and I'm I'm fixing it Okay, now that I've moved that in, as far as I can go, I've got to uh, adjust this again because my wheel turned out, which that's okay. Not a big deal. <laughs> So I don't get this out of whack I have the wheel as straight as I can get it because I've got this uh, mark there kind of shows the center which is nice
my extra observant viewers will probably notice that my hair changed from the driver's side to the passenger side in this segment of this video because I went and got my hair cut. Well, my torque wrench just decided to stop working all of a sudden. All right, we're here at Harbor Freight to get our torque wrench replacement. Okay, it's time to get to you home. All right, we're going to torque these to 100 foot pounds. For a new wrench. Oh, there we go. That's how it should work. All right, so I'm going to take it for another spin around the block, uh, let the suspension kind of settle, and see if it's uh, any better to my liking, I guess. Gonna let it warm up a little bit on this cold April day. All right, well, I didn't film that second drive because, you know, it was a lot like the first drive, but I'm very happy with how this turned out. And uh, everything seems to be close as I can get it for who I am. Here's my tools list. Well, that's going to do it for this project. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you got any questions, 
shoot me a message and be sure to check out the uh, new website at uh, www.firebird2000.com. It's spelled just like the uh, YouTube page name, so check it out. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.